Worst years of my life, middle school, chapter 26, revenge for sale. The next day at school, I put our new plan into action. It took until about fourth period for word to get around. By lunchtime, I had a whole line of kids from every grade waiting at my locker for a nice refreshing can of Zoom. Right out of bears, smaller than it used to be. Not such a secret stash anymore. Hills Village Middle School is a sugary drink free zone. So something like Zoom is pure gold around here. I made it BYOC, bring your own cup. So there wouldn't be any marked cans floating around. One dollar filled the cup of your choice or emptied the can, whichever came first. Then I could take the empties home, put them back in their cases and wait to see if Bear ever got to the bottom of, bottom of his stash. And if he did, I had a plan for that too. My customers kept saying how cool this was and thanks Rafe, including a bunch of people who I didn't even think knew my name. I guess Miller the Killer was right about one thing. I was starting to get a reputation around here. Business was going good too. I'd made 16 bucks, not to mention 35,000 points by lunchtime. I didn't see Jeannie Galetta at the end of the line until she was there at my locker. Let me say that again. Jeannie Galetta was at my locker. Thirsty, I said, trying to stay cool. You know, this is totally against the rules, she said. That makes it taste better, I said. Good line, right? Jeannie just looked at me the same way mum does sometimes, and even Donatello. It was like she was trying to figure me out. Why does it seem like you're always trying to get in trouble, Jeannie said. I don't get that. What I did next was probably stupid, but to tell you the truth, I didn't know what else to say. Can you keep it secret? I asked. I took out the HVMS code of conduct and showed her how I'd already crossed out a bunch of rules. Yeah, Jeannie said, so what? I'm going to be the first person to break every single one of these, one rule at a time. Oh, great, she said. Thanks for telling me. Now I could get into trouble too. No, you can't, I said. That's my policy. Whatever happens, I don't let anyone else get hurt. You can even turn me in if you want to. She just stared at me, but in a but not in a totally bad way. It was more like she hadn't made up her mind yet. Go ahead, I said, make my day. Then Jeannie Galera did something she'd never done before. She smiled right at me. I know this will sound corny, but it was a really, really nice smile. I think Leo was right. She liked that no hurt rule. Of course, the stupid bell had to ring for fifth period and that smile disappeared faster than a can of Zoom out of my locker. Oh my gosh, I'm late for science, Jeannie said. Don't worry about it, I said. No, that's what you do, she told me. And now she was just annoyed. By the time I said bye, she was already going up the hall as fast as she could without actually running because, you know, that's against the rules. What just happened? I asked Leo after she was gone. I'm not sure about this, he said. But I think you just got one step closer to Section 4, Rule 7. No kissing or other public displays of, of affection are allowed in school. Chapter 27. Cracking the Dress Code When Halloween rolled around, it seemed like the perfect time in the game to take on Section 1, Rule 1, the Hills Village Middle School Dress Code. Normally, this would have been an easy one, but, but Leo liked it when I upped my game. So he laid down all kinds of challenges and chances for me to earn some extra big points. Forget the fire alarm, forget about the tension with the dragon lady. This was definitely going to be the scariest thing I'd done so far. The first challenge was just about getting out of the house without mum finding out about it. No costume rave, she said at breakfast. Georgia was eating a bowl of Cheerios, standing up because she couldn't sit down. She was already wearing her big pink wig, wings. I was just wearing jeans and a regular shirt. Are you already getting too old for Halloween? Mum asked. I answered her with one of my not quite lies. It's middle school, I said. In fact, everything was already in my backpack and I changed in the bathroom when I got to school. Black shoes, black pants, black turtleneck, black ski mask. 
My backpack was dark blue, but that was close enough. I also had a pocket full of Cheerios for throwing stars and nunchucks made out of a couple of paper roll towels with a piece of rope knotted between each end. It would have been nice to have a sword too, but just try fitting a mop handle in your backpack sometime. It was only a matter of time before some teacher nabbed me, so Leo said he'd give me 10,000 points for every 50 yards of ground I could cover inside the school. I came tearing out of the bathroom at full speed and just kept running. Through the first floor, 10,000. Up the stairs, 10,000. Down the second floor, past the lockers, 10,000. That's a picture of the ninja. Throwing Cheerios and swinging my nunchucks like crazy. If there were a highlight reel, the number one play would have been would have to have been when I saw Miller the Killer in the hall. I made sure my mask was pulled down tight over my face. Then I took a big wind up as I went by and beamed him upside the head with one of the chucks. 10,000. What the? Miller turned the wrong way just as I passed him. By the time he'd figured out where I came from and where I was headed, I'd already left him in the dust. He was twice as big as me, but I was twice as fast. Eat it, Miller. And then, splam, I ran right into Mrs. Stryker. Literally. Let's just say she wasn't in the mood for wrestling. What in heaven's name is this? She said, grabbing me by the arm. I'm a ninja, I told her. You're a nincompoop, she said. Take off that mask immediately. I pulled off the mask. Rafe, she said. I might have guessed. You absolutely may not run around the school in that costume. There's no rule against ninjas, I said. And believe me, I checked. Consider it our newest regulation, Stryker said. No ninjas allowed at Halloween or any time. You're going to have to take that off. Okay, okay, I said, like it was a big deal. But this was actually the part I'd been waiting for. Phase two, double points. I went into the bathroom and came out a minute later without my ninja costume, running just as fast as before. Rafe, catch your Dorian, Stryker shouted after me, but I was already gone. Some kids got out, of, got out of my way. Some even ran in the other direction. A few of the girls screamed when I came through, but I don't think they meant it. And a few people even yelled stuff like, go Rafe, go, and don't let him get you. Because like I said, I wasn't wearing my ninja costume anymore. In fact, I wasn't wearing much of anything. Just sneakers, a pair of boxes, and a big old smile. Chapter 28, Kicking It Dungeon Style. There's a picture of the dungeon, two monsters. I forgot my hall pass. I thought for sure I'd land in Stryker's office for this one. It turned out I wasn't thinking big enough. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the dungeon. I'm not the only one up for execution today. It's Halloween after all. So there's a whole dungeon full of people waiting to hear what their torture is going to be. Hey, the prisoner next to me whispers, aren't you Rafe Cachadorian? I've seen his face before, but I don't know his name. That's right, I say. I've heard about you, he says. What did you do this time? I broke the dress code, I tell him. He doesn't look very impressed. Quiet, yelled one of the guards. No talking under penalty of death. I'm getting ready to ask what the difference is, since we're all about to get the death sentences anyway. But just then, the door to the inner chamber swings open. It's too late for me now. They carry out the body of the last victim, and the Lizard King himself beckons me inside with one long, green, sticky finger. His Majesty, the Lizard King. Chapter 29. The inner chamber is cold and wet. The Lizard King slides back into his place, across from which I'm supposed to sit. It smells like... I don't know what in there. He takes a lid off a jar of something that looks like white jelly beans and holds it out for me. Would you like one? He says. That's when I see that they're not jelly beans, but they are moving. I'll pass, I say. He shrugs and pops a couple in his mouth. Something blue runs out over his chin as he chews them. 
It seems you've been making a name for yourself around the kingdom, he says. My spies tell me you're quite the show off. When a fly lands on the wall and a tongue shoots out about three feet and he nabs it. I'm telling you, this guy never stops eating. Do you have any idea? Do you have anything to say in your own defense before I pronounce your sentence? He asks. He asks me around a mouthful of fly. I think you're confusing me with my twin brother, I say. Wrong answer. The lizard king reaches over and flattens a hand, or is it a foot, against my face. Either way, it's like Velcro and superglue combined. He picks me up by my head and slams me into the wall. I can barely breathe anymore, and the smell of his breath is so bad at close range, I barely want to. Guilty as charged, he tells me. Then he peels his grip off me, and I drop to the floor like a load of concrete. The Lizard King runs up the wall and across the ceiling. He hangs there, upside down, ready to deliver my sentence. Three rounds in the detention chamber with the Dragon Lady heals. Or until someone ends up dead, whichever comes first.